Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the API Manager webinar series. Uh, today we are going to discuss about on-prem analytics uh, solution that we have introduced with API Manager 410 via this webinar. Uh, before we start the webinar, uh, let me introduce myself and the colleague who is uh, uh, de delivering this webinar with me. Uh, yes, my name is Anusha Jaisundar. Uh, I work uh, I work as a associate tech lead at API Manager team at WS2. And uh, hello everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Delini Mutumala, mm -hmm. and I'm an ATL at WS2, working in the same team as Anusha. Uh, before we move on to the agenda, so if you have any questions. Uh, please feel free to uh, uh, put those in the chat. So we will try to uh, answer them at the end of this uh, session. So today's agenda is uh, first, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what is API Analytics, and uh, then uh, we'll uh, let you know what to choose based on your use case, whether you have to use a on-prem analytics, whether you are more capable of using the cloud-based analytics. And then uh, we will walk you through the uh, architecture of the newly introduced on-prem analytics solution. And then uh, we will uh, give you a brief introduction to the features and the functionalities that we are providing with our on-prem analytics solution. And if you have, if you want to more add more uh, functionalities, if you want to see more uh, analytics uh, data, so how you can extend and how you can include those into the uh, uh, our uh, default provide dashboard, we will explain that. And then we will explain how we can integrate uh, the on-prem analytics solution into a billing system so that you can achieve the monetization. And at the end, we will uh, discuss uh, how uh, you can migrate your all data into a the latest API analytic solution. So when we talked about API analytics, so there are more two main uh, insights that we expect from analytic solution. One is the business business insight, and the second one is the operational insight. So in the business insight, we mainly focus on how the API and API APIs are performed over time, and what are the trends of API usage and what are the trends of application usage. So these kind of things we consider as business insights. And when we talk about the operational insights, so mostly we uh, focus on operational aspects of the API. What are the availabilities of those APIs? What, um, what are the errors that occur during the API availability? And how the latency, how the uh, throttling has worked? So those kind of operational data is considered as the operational insight. So as I explained before, so uh, with this uh, 410 release, we have two main analytics solutions. One is on-prem analytics, and the, uh, the second one is the cloud-based analytics. So the cloud-based analytics is powered by the Corio, so one of uh, WS2 uh, cloud solution. So the main uh, advantage of using the Corio is you don't have to bear any burden of maintaining and deploying the analytic solution. And this uh, Corio analytics also has the full capabilities as the uh, on-prem analytic solution. So it has the business and operational level analytics uh, widgets and dashboards. And it has its own alerting and uh, report generation capabilities. So if you are a user who uh, can uh, uh, who don't like to maintain the analytic solution and it is uh, not a problem or uh, you are not bound to keep the data in on-prem uh, deployment, so you can choose the cloud-based analytics. That is the best solution for that scenario. But if you uh, have, if your company has policies that you have to keep the data in-house and if you have to meet uh, compliance with third-party clients, and uh, third party vendors, and that uh, use cases, you can go with the on, on prem analytics solution that we are providing. So, in this solution, you have to maintain the infrastructure for the analytics solution, and you have to control the and maintain 
the entry solution by yourself. So let's move on to the architecture. So in the API Analytics uh, solution, on-prem Analytics solution, we it is actually powered by the ELK stack. So we use uh, Logstash, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and Filebits to facilitate the analytic solution. So API Managed Gateway will be uh, write uh, like it will be write the analytics data into a log file, and that log file will be read by Filebits and published into the ELK stack. So in the uh, when we publishing the analytics uh, events, so for each successful API invocation, we will be publishing a response event, and for each uh, fault and throttle invocation, we will be publishing a fault event. So that uh, two types of event will be read by file bits uh, from the analytics log file and publish that data into the log stash. So from the log stash. Those data will be the incoming data will be cleansed. So in the log file, the file will be the event will be written as a string. So from the log stash, it will be uh, cleansed and tokenized as a JSON object, and will be published into the Elasticsearch so that we don't have to manually uh, uh, handle uh, events so automatically mapped into the Elasticsearch index. So Kibana is used as the presentation layer of the solution. So all the widgets and the dashboard that developed by WS2 will be deployed in this Kibana dashboard. So it will uh, work as the uh, presentation layer. And uh, so uh, this contains the business analytics, operational and APM level analytics uh, details and the dashboards. So let's uh, look at what are the uh, dashboards, widgets, features that we are providing with on-prem analytic solution by default. So, uh, in, uh, in order to uh, teach you a business analytics requirement, so we provide uh, several dashboards and widgets which has the uh, business insight. Like uh, we have uh, we have dashboards to show the overall overall usage of the API manager instance. In AP Manager deployment, which has uh, separate dashboards to uh, facilitate the popular devices, the platform, and API usage level data, and API and application trends. And also, we have developed multiple analytics uh, widgets, which provides you the insights of usage, traffic, performance, and error of uh, each and every API application. And those dashboards and widgets have the capability to filter by application, API, users, and uh, from all of these dashboards, you can drill down to the exact event if you want to see the raw event of each uh, dashboard, uh, uh, dashboard uh, data point. When we talked about the operational analytics, uh, we can divide the operational analytics in mainly into two, two types. So one type is the uh, error analysis. So we have provided a separate dashboard uh, which contains the errors and group them by with status code, error type, and the uh, endpoint where the error occurs, whether it's on the target level or the proxy level. And uh, the second point is the API performance analytics, uh, the latency of each API, uh, what is the mediation, uh, request mediation latency, what is the response mediation latency, and the, what is the target latency. And we uh, have uh, provide a widget uh, to facilitate, like show you the 95th percentile of the latency. And by analyzing those latency da dashboards and the graph, you can take ac action to mitigate the latency issues, and you can take action to uh, mitigate the errors occurred in the API level. And you can be you will be able to break down up to an event and analyze why this kind of lat latency occurred and what is the endpoint that this latency uh, was uh, generated from. So uh, we have created a special uh, dashboard which contains the API uh, level analytics 
so actually this is also a subset of the business analytics but due to its due to its importance so we have created a separate uh, dashboard to store those uh, table uh, like uh, those data so here in this uh, dashboard we have uh, widgets which shows the popular apis uh, identify uh, less uh, used apis and uh, which has the capability to identify the bottleneck of APIs, whether it's on the mediation path or the backend service, and you can get an idea about the resource usage pattern as well by analyzing the data analytics uh, dashboard. And also, uh, one of the main important thing in analytics solution is alert generating alerts and generating reports. So, since uh, the Kibana is a very uh, uh, popular and uh, uh, feature-rich uh, analytics provider, analytics dashboard provider. So we can uh, grab those features, the uh, rich uh, capabilities of Kibana to uh, generate the alerts. So uh, Kibana has the capability to uh, alerting via emails, Jira, ServiceNow, like so many technologies, and also. Uh, since uh, Kibana has the access to the analytics events that we are publishing, so we can generate, uh, we, we can create any type of alerts, a threshold to generate alerts. And also the same goes for the uh, report generation as well. Since uh, Kibana has all access to all the analytics data, we can uh, generate reports uh, by, uh, if we need to generate, uh, convert, a dashboard into a report, we can do that, or we can generate a separate uh, report, including uh, any details that we need, and we can download that as a PDF or a PNG, or we can export that as a CSV file. So let me uh, walk you through a live demo where I can show you all the uh, dashboards and the widgets that I have mentioned in the webinar. So uh, this, so this will be the uh, landing page of the uh, analytics dashboard that we are providing uh, on top of the Kibana. So here you can see uh, the total traffic, error count, average uh, error rate, 95 percentile latency, and a, uh, area graph where we show the API request summary. And uh, the left-hand side navigation bar can be used to navigate through all the dashboards that is there in the uh, solution. So we have a traffic dashboard where we show uh, the API traffic related uh, data. So in this uh, dashboard, we have API usage by backend, API usage by application, and API usage by uh, resource usage. And then again, we have a dashboard where we have API analytics level data. So yeah, you have the capability to filter from the API name and the API version. And this dashboard is also contain overall API usage and top application creators and top API creators. Uh, these kind of analytics related, API analytics related data is there in this dashboard. And use analytics. In the use analytics dashboard, we have uh, widgets which is uh, mainly focused on API user, users. So as you can see here, we have a top 10 API user widget and uh, API call status and API user analytics uh, uh, tables where we can uh, see the uh, data based on the username, API name, version, application, and success false count. Then we have the error dashboard where we uh, focus on the errors occurred on the uh, analytics uh, API manager and uh, deployment. So here also we have error uh, dashboards by the error type uh, and then the status code and the uh, endpoint where the error occurs, whether it's occurred in the proxy level or the target level. And then uh, latency dashboard where we list down all the latency types 
uh, top 10, 10 flower state APIs and uh, graph by uh, latency type, whether it's on the target, the request mediation, or the response mediation. And then uh, we have a uh, dashboard where we show the cache related data, and we have a dashboard where we show the top uh, platforms that have been used to invoke the APIs and top use agent that has been used to invoke the APIs. So these are the uh, all the dashboards that we have provided. As you can see, we have all the details covered through these dashboards. So to continue the webinar, I would like to invite Dilini. Uh, thank you, Anu, sir. Uh, now let's move on to the uh, advanced topics. Um, the existing dashboards uh, visualize most of the information uh, the end users are requesting. But uh, in your case, uh, if you need to visualize uh, beyond uh, what is provided, then you can create your own uh, custom dashboard. So to do that, uh, you need a brief understanding of the data flow and the data model. So uh, take a look at this uh, diagram. Uh, this uh, shows the data flow. Um, first, the data flows from the WC API Manager to Elasticsearch. Uh, this includes all sorts of uh, API-related data in raw form, unfiltered. It reaches Kibana, then uh, Kibana, which is the dashboard component, uh, query those data and visualize them. Uh, the WC API Manager publishes uh, two types of events to Elasticsearch, uh, response events and fault events, as you can see on this image. Uh, APM event response and APM event faulty. Uh, you can see the uh, response event uh, contains data regarding uh, each successful API invocation via the gateway, for example, uh, the API creator, the tenant domain, the API method, and all such information related to a successful API invocation. Uh, next, uh, while the uh, fault event contains the data regarding uh, each faulty API invocation via the gateway. Um, now uh, we will show you how to use these uh, published data to create your own dashboards and widgets. Anusha will uh, do a short demonstration for you on this. Anusha, okay. Okay, thank you. So let's say that you want to extend your overview page by adding a widget which shows the uh, error uh, by the error type. So in order to do that, let's click on the edit dashboard and we can create a visualization. So here you can see that the uh, index uh, data views that we have uh, uh, introduced with the uh, Antic solution. So we, as the explain, we have the APM event faulty uh, index uh, data view where we have all the faulty data. APM event response uh, data view which we have all the response data and the APM event star uh, data view where we have combined those two data into one data view. So let's click on that. And let's, since we want the error type, let's search the uh, field from the filter. Okay, let's get this error type and we can drag this onto the fields here. And now you can see that the automatic, they have automatically generated few types of graph here. So let's uh, focus on uh, donut chart. So now uh, we are done with the uh, creating the widget. So we have a uh, quite nice uh, donut chart uh, which which shows the uh, errors uh, percentage and the error count with uh, the error type. And let's enable the legend as well so we can list down the uh, error types here. And let's save the widget. So after you save the widget, it will be automatically added to the dashboard. Now you can rearrange this dashboard as you please to accommodate your newly added widget. Uh, let's rearrange this. Let's move this to here. Arrange this. Let's move this. Here. Okay. Now we have extended the basic uh, the uh, on-prem analytic solution that we have provided by default. Over to you, Dini. Thanks, Anusha. 
Um, now we move on to the next topic, uh, that is how to integrate your billing system uh, with the analytics. So as you know, a billing system allows you to monetize your API. So it's an important part of any API management system. You have uh, two options to integrate your billing system. You can either plug in your billing system into the gateway or you can plug it into the analytics. Uh, let's take a look at uh, option number one. Uh, here we plug in the billing system into the gateway. Uh, in this approach, uh, the, the usage data is published from the gateway to a third-party billing engine via an extendable interface. Uh, in this case, the user needs to do a custom implementation by uh, implementing this uh, extendable interface to push data to the intended billing engine. So after uh, you configure it, uh, the real-time data will be pushed to the billing engine for billing purpose. Uh, the option number two is uh, plugging your billing system uh, straight into the analytics server. So uh, in this option, uh, the, um, the analytics server, anyway, it exposes a REST API. So in this approach, uh, the billing system can invoke this REST API to fetch uh, required data from the analytics environment. Uh, we call this the pool mode because the billing system uh, directly pulls the data from the analytics. But uh, consider uh, in a situation where the billing system is uh, not capable of uh, calling a REST API for, uh, to fetch data from a third party application like the analytics server in this case. Uh, in that case, uh, the second approach can be used, which we call the uh, push mode. So in this mode, uh, another component called uh, data populator, we can call it anything. Uh, we call it uh, data populator. It can be implemented to fetch data from the uh, analytics environment by uh, invoking the REST API. Then after uh, performing the required transformations, filtering, etc., the data can be pushed to the billing system for processing. Um, let's move on to the next topic, which is an important one, uh, moving data from uh, an older version of analytics. Uh, as you can, can see on this table, uh, in older versions of analytics, uh, data was stored in uh, relational database tables. So, however, in this uh, new version of analytics, uh, data is stored in Elasticsearch, which is uh, not relational. So due to this reason, uh, it's not straightforward to migrate data from older versions, I'm afraid. Uh, in older versions of analytics, the data was uh, summarized. It's summarized and stored in relational databases, and the dashboard uh, directly fetched the summarized data from the underlying data tables, and those were visualized. Uh, in this version of analytics, uh, instead of uh, storing summarized data, uh, the raw data is uh, stored in an elastic cluster. So what's the uh, Kibana dashboard uh, request for summarized data? Uh, the Elasticsearch cluster uh, summarizes the data on the fly and returns. And uh, moreover, the Kibana dashboard is not uh, capable of retrieving data from a relational database uh, directly. So uh, due to these limitations, uh, Migrating from uh, old analytics versions to this version is not uh, very straightforward. However, uh, the good news is that uh, there's a way to do that. Uh, the approach that we suggest is to uh, migrate the summarized data in your relational database tables to Elasticsearch indexes first. Then it's only a matter of uh, visualizing the data via a new set of dashboards which uses the migrated data. Uh, to migrate uh, data to Elasticsearch, you can use uh, Logstash. Uh, when you use Logstash, you just have to add a simple configuration uh, as, uh, as you can see on this image. Uh, nothing too much uh, to worry about, as these are like pretty simple configs. Uh, to visualize the migrated data, uh, WSO will provide you with the, with the new set of dashboards that I mentioned in, in the previous slide. Uh, let me take you through a few uh, screenshots from these uh, dashboards. Um, as you can see, uh, pretty much all the information that you can get from the ELK solution 
you can get from here as well. Uh, it gives you information about uh, total request count, edit account, uh, top API users, etc. Uh, and uh, here's another page. Uh, you can see uh, more charts here, uh, like request summary, usage summary, etc. So uh, with this, uh, uh, we come to the end of the end of our presentation, uh, and we will now answer a few uh, uh, FAQs. Um, yeah, um, okay. we have a question. Uh, says how uh, we can achieve alerting and reporting via this uh, ELK-based solution. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, as I explained uh, in this. Presentation. So, Kibana has a very uh, uh, re uh, feature-rich uh, functionalities, capabilities to generate alerts and uh, publish those, and generate uh, 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 like uh, uh, reporting. So, we can use those uh, benefits. And since the uh, Kibana runtime has the access to the Elasticsearch data that we have published, uh, the analytics data that we have published, so. Uh, from there, they can uh, provide the thresholds to generate alert and uh, in, like publish alerting data into it. Uh, so uh, any uh, publisher like uh, email or message anywhere. Okay. Uh, the next question: How the product uh, support? How the product support will uh, work with this solution? Yeah, since uh, actually uh, this. Uh, Solution contains uh, two sets of products, so WS2 on products and Elasticsearch on products. So all the uh, artifacts that are provided provided by the WSO2, the dashboards, which is, will be supported by WSO2 support. And uh, if uh, the all the other components like uh, Kibana, Elasticsearch, and the ELK deployment, so that has to be uh, handled by the customer. So we uh, recommend buying uh, Elasticsearch subscription for their Elasticsearch analytics so that uh, the customer doesn't uh, want to bear the burden of maintaining that. Right. Um, the next question we have got is, uh, is this solution uh, can be deployed in containerized environment? Ah, yeah. So in the... So for this uh, development, actually, we used a basic uh, and very uh, popular uh, Elasticsearch deployment pattern. So where we uh, write our data into a log file, and the log file will be read by the log stash and published into Elasticsearch. So this uh, pattern is supported in ELK and in their cloud, uh, so containerized uh, deployment as well. So due to that, our analytics solution is also capable of deploying in uh, any uh, deployment patterns that is supported by the uh, Elasticsearch. All right, so that's all the questions we have got, Anusha. Uh, so I hope uh, we can uh, wrap up the session now. So thanks a lot for your time. Uh, we hope this session uh, was useful to you. Uh, please feel free to get in touch with us uh, if you have any questions. Uh, we are more than happy to engage with you, help you. So thanks a lot again for joining us. And uh, we hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.